So I am here today to do a book review and the book that I'm going to be reviewing is this one which is The Watchmaker of Filigree Street and it's by Natasha Pulley, it is her debut book. I picked this one up because I knew that Mercedes from Mercy's Bookish Musings was reading it and I loved the cover and it sounded like it would be a really interesting book, steampunkish and also historical so I was looking forward to it immensely. I definitely love the cover, I must say, before I get into what it's about, I do love the cover. I think the cover really, really represents what the story is. This little octopus up here definitely has a massive part to do with the story. We also have bombs and fireworks and we've got all this clockwork and watches and all sorts of craziness. So it's definitely got all of those things in it. This isn't exactly what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be more of a mystery story than it was. It was slightly mystery. It definitely had mystery elements. It wasn't quite as developed or quite as fluid as I would have liked. I think this book suffers from being a debut book because I do think it's quite clumsy in places. The writing style is not necessarily clunky, but it does have some moments where things are said in a way that could have been done better. You're kind of confused about who's who or what's going on in the scene for sure because there are moments where it's a little bit hard to tell. That's not to say that she's a bad writer but it definitely could have done with some heavier editing I think because that really would have helped the book be better on a whole. The story of this basically follows two main characters. The main one is Daniel who is a clerk, he works for the Home Office in London and he basically in charge of the telegraphs there. He takes in the telegraphs in Morse code and he sort of deciphers them and sends other telegraphs around. He's pretty good at that but he doesn't really like the job that he has. He kind of wishes that he'd done something a bit more with his life by now and he's kind of stuck in a bit of a rut. So we follow him. And then the other main character that we're following is called Grace, and Grace goes to Oxford. She is studying at Oxford and she sort of doesn't really like being a female at Oxford because she thinks a lot of the other females at Oxford at the time are kind of snooty and annoying and she doesn't really care for them. For example, in this book the author makes the decision to make our main character against suffrage, which is interesting because she's a female and she made a female character against it. But I think that's more to do with the fact that Grace herself thinks she is a bit better than everyone else. She kind of looks down on those other females who are a bit uppity and obsessed with fashion and, and men and things like that. And it's an interesting way to portray a character in this time period from a female writer. I like that. I like that she took a risk there. So our main character, Grace, sneaks into the libraries and she does that dressed as a man because it's easier to get in as a man and she is very very scientifically minded she wants to discover whether or not the ether exists and she's doing a lot of experiments and a lot of research into this because she wants to establish herself in her own right and she doesn't want to depend on her mother and father forever because she wants to be her own person she doesn't want to get married and she doesn't want to do any of the stereotypical things that a female does i admired that a lot about her as a character and then she goes ahead and does it anyway <laughs> which I didn't like because I thought she was a really cool character. Stuff happened and I was like, well, now you've done exactly what I didn't want you to do. So that was disappointing. Didn't really care about her storyline after the midway point. I think the introduction of her as a character was good. After that, I just got bored with her. In the end, I really didn't like her because I think she did some stupid stuff. I think she made some bad decisions and I think she was basically essentially having a tantrum for a lot of the book and doing stuff that put a lot of the other characters in danger and was really pointless to me. It didn't feel like it, it had a real reason. Daniel, on the other hand, is an interesting character. I think his story took a little bit more time to build and I didn't like his character as much initially, but then I did grow to like him a lot more, whereas Grace, I didn't. He basically finds this watch in his room one day. He comes back from the office and he finds this watch and it's got no name or anything. He doesn't know who put it there. He doesn't know how they got in and why they came in and just left a watch. He's no idea who it was that left it there, but he goes on a kind of search to find out what is going on. He doesn't really dig up anything. He tries to return it, no one will take it. He tries to pawn it, no one will take it. And so he eventually decides, right, I'm gonna go and find the guy who made it. And that's where the story starts to kind of take off. I really like the watchmaker. I thought he was an interesting character. I like him because he's a bit weird, he's a little bit crazy, he's a little bit whimsical and he kind of lives in his own world a bit of the time. He is an interesting character throughout and I think he was definitely the most interesting of the main three. 
The other character that I really liked is Katsu, who is the clockwork octopus, and I loved him. He was great. He was fabulous. He was definitely the best bit in the whole book for me, was the clockwork octopus. I don't want to say anything more than that, because I don't want to give it away, but I loved him. He was super awesome, and he just made me laugh, because, yeah, he had a little sock obsession, and it was really cute, and I loved him. The storyline felt clunky, and it did feel confused, and it did feel mismatched, which is really sad, because I think this could have been a very, very interesting book. I think it suffers from the fact that it didn't have enough editing and it didn't necessarily have enough proofreading. It really could have been more thoroughly done and if it had been I think it would have been a more interesting story because you wouldn't have got as confused about who was who and what was what and exactly how it was all tied together. We have some moments where we jump back into the past and we see the past of some of the characters which is interesting but again it's, it's slightly confused, it does feel a little bit confused overall. That would be my main description of this book would be some good ideas, some interesting characters, but a little bit confused and perhaps not developed to the potential that it could have been. That's pretty much what I would say overall about this. I mean, it's not a bad book. It was alright. It was an easy read, but it wasn't great. And I ended up giving it a 2.5 out of 5 stars. I think there's better historical fiction and steampunk out there. I do love the cover. I do love the fact that it's got a little hole here. That's pretty cute. Other than that, I think this is just an okay story, so... I would love to hear your thoughts though, maybe you guys loved it more than I did, or maybe you disliked it even more than I did, I'd love to hear if you guys have read it, or if you're planning to read it, or if my review has put you off, or made you want to buy it, definitely let me know. Thank you guys all for watching, and I will see you all very very soon. Bye! Me and you gonna have a little chat about the